answering a letter on how a Roman Catholic can become a born-again Christian. Recently got this in the mail, and um, I'm going to read this letter here and answer it. Not going to be giving any names or anything else here, but it says, um, Hi Brian, I'm the name, been watching your videos and love them. I have a few questions that I would like you to answer because I think you would give good feedback. What do you think of holy water and oils that are from the Jordan River? I use it in the sign of the cross on my forehead and it helps a lot. Do you think that they offer protection or is it really worth it to put on? Well, friend, um, where's it at in scriptures? It's not there. Nobody has to get water shipped to them from the river Jordan there, the Jordan River, or holy oils put on their forehead in the sign of the cross. You won't find anybody in the entire New Testament that does that. Do I think it's necessary? No. I have never done it in all my life as a Christian, and the Lord's blessed me abundantly. Do you believe in doing the sign of the cross after a prayer? Where's it at? It's not there. No, I don't. Or is that a Trinity Catholic thing? Let me know. Would love your feedback. Yes, it's a Trinity Catholic thing. And you're actually you're conders <laughs> condersing. <laughs> cursing yourself. Condemning yourself and cursing yourself. Okay? Um, cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree. Well, you're kind of symbolizing an upside down cross when you do that. That's a problem. You're putting yourself under a hex. Um, I'm also trying to get born again. How should I do that when I don't want to go to a non-denominational church? Should the water be blessed first? Would love your feedback. Um, being born again is not something that you need water for. Okay, um, Being born again is having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ when the Holy Spirit comes into you. Uh, you don't need any kind of water baptism or anything for that. Water baptism is kind of an, a uh, thing that you can do before your relatives or before other people. I shouldn't say before your relatives, but be, you can be baptized by immersion under the water and back up again. That's fine. If you don't, well, you're not going to go to hell or anything, you know, if you don't get baptized. Um, again, understand that being born again, it's a, it's a spiritual thing. The condition of your body is like this, okay? Your body of flesh is corruptible, and it always will be. When you get born again, that doesn't change. Your body is corruptible. See my gray hair here? Gray hair up in here, too. Um, yeah, it's corruptible. I have plenty of scars on my body and, and aches and pains in my back and whatever else. My body of flesh is corruptible. But inside this body is a soul, okay? Um, <clears throat> and then inside that, I have a spirit, the spirit of your mind up here. There's a connection to God that he can give me sermons and he can put thoughts into my mind and whatever he can speak to me in a still small voice. That's up here in the mind. So I have three parts to me, but one body. God is three in one, all right? Three parts to one body. Man is made in the image of God, after the likeness of God. All right, that doesn't mean I'm God. It just means I'm made in his likeness, in his image. When you are lost, your body is corruptible. Your spirit does not have that connection to God. Okay, you don't understand things. You can't understand, you know, the Bible talks about the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. They are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. There are certain things you just can't get because it's, it's kind of like having a remote control that has no batteries in it. You have a spirit, that's what you're breathing. You know, Greek word pneuma is the word used for spirit. Um, but you have this spirit there, but it's not connected to God. It's not connected to the Holy Spirit, plugged into the Holy Spirit. Your soul is connected to your body. All right, so the soul is what part of you is there. It's eternal. All right, I will get a new body when I go to heaven, but if I, you know, at the resurrection... But if I go to heaven right now, there's no body waiting for me there. All right. No body, not nobody, but no body waiting for me there. Um, when you get saved, what happens is there's a spiritual circumcision that happens where your flesh is, your soul is cut free from your flesh. In the Old Testament, that wasn't there. That's why the Old Testament system of Judaism is inferior to modern day Christianity. Modern day Christianity has completed Judaism. All right. You don't go any further than Christianity as a Jew. Um, but in the Old Testament, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. They would touch something that's unclean, and they would be unclean until they do certain sacrifices or whatever else. 
Okay, so please understand this. I'm not trying to get too detailed here, but when now that we are Christians in the New Testament, as a Christian in the New Testament, I'll say it this way, what saves us, what makes it, it different is I ask the Lord to save me. I understand what the Bible says about salvation. Jesus died for my sin according to the scriptures. And he was buried and he rose again from the dead. If he didn't rise from the dead, there's no point. He's just the same as any other religious leader out there. Now, Jesus died and he was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. There were eyewitness accounts, the whole thing. Not to mention the fact that I know Jesus Christ personally. Um, he's changed my life. So what happens is, understand the gospel. The Bible says that Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins. I believe that this book is God's book. I believe the account of scripture. I believe that he did die on the cross to pay for my personal sins. And so I put my faith in that. I believe it up here in my mind. You see, you're making the connection between my mind and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit starting to reveal things in my mind. And I say, he died for me? Wow, that's really amazing to think on. And none of my works. I can't be saved by works. It's his grace that he had for me. By grace are you saved through faith. I have faith. I, can, I can't see it. I can't see Jesus on the cross. But I have faith that it actually happened. I believe it and I have faith that it happened. And understand God's grace and say how he died for me on the cross. What's the next step? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You pray and you say, God, I believe your word. I believe this book right here. I believe this book says if I put my faith in the death of burial and resurrection, the blood that you shed on that cross, that that can wash away all my sins and I can become a new creature in Christ Jesus. God, please save me. You know, you don't have to say these exact words, just come up with your own words. But cry out to God, ask him to save you. Again, if you need help, you don't just imagine that 911 or that the fire department and the police are going to show up in the ambulance. You have to get on the phone and call them. Well, the way you get on the phone to get saved is you call out to God. You pray to God. You believe by faith, but you also have to call. And you do that, and what happens is the Holy Spirit of God will come into your mind and make that connection, and things will start to happen. When the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you into all truth. And now, all of a sudden, things start to click in your brain, and you say, I never saw it that way before. Wow, that makes sense. Hey, you know what? I was never bothered by people using profanity, but I am now. Wow, ugh, the, ooh, the cigarette, uh, I don't really want that anymore. And, you know, this stuff will take time. I'm not saying it all happens just like that. You know, the, the beer and thing, uh, you know, and I don't really want to watch that. I don't, oh, that, I don't, that's offensive to me. Things will start to happen. The Holy Spirit of truth comes into your mind. And then the body and the soul are cut loose. So if you sin now, if you mess around, you mess up, do some kind of bad thing, uh, well, your sin will affect your flesh. Again, if you sow to the flesh, you will to the flesh reap corruption. Um, that's an important thing there. So, uh, but it's not going to affect your soul. That's what we have. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. That's how you have eternal security. The eternal security is there for your soul and your spirit. All right. It's not there for your body. Your body's going to fall apart and get older and whatever else. I know that, and a lot of the older saints out there do too. Uh, back to the letter. And how do I deal with feelings about drifting back to a Lutheran or Catholic church? I've well, you'll have that because you think to yourself because they both they both will mind control you into thinking that your salvation is something you have to work for, that being part of the church will get you saved. So that you have to escape that mind control of them, and realize no, it's a personal relationship. And again, the, the quickest way to escape that mind control is just simply to say, where's the word Lutheran at? Where's the word Catholic at? It's not there. Yeah, well, if it's not there, then why would God judge you for leaving it? I've deconditioned myself from them, but feel separated from these those denominations. I only read from the KJV now. Very good. And don't go to any church. Is it really necessary to stay away from church all the time? Church all the time. We'd we'll love your personal feedback on the questions. Um, you don't have to stay away from other Christians. Okay, again, understand the church is the people; it's not the building. So you meet a bunch of churches or a bunch of people, 
Christians, real true Christians, fellowship with them. Absolutely. The reason I'm against church buildings is because it sets up this two different uh, these the two different lives that you live. The one when you're in church and then when, when you're out of church. And that's why I'm against that whole thing. If you meet together, you can meet together with thousands of people, and that's fine. Just don't call the building the church. It's the people that is the church. And when you leave the building, you're still in church. Okay, understand that. It clears up a lot of confusion. Thank you for putting um, out YouTube videos. They are very informative. Love your ministry. Also, what is the most ideal way to get born again with family or a non-denominational church? Uh, the best way to get born again is with Jesus Christ and the King James Bible. Would love for your response to all my questions. Uh, give my email too. So, but uh, <clears throat> so hopefully that answers the questions. And um, I can't really say a whole lot more. We can go through the scriptures, but I'm just trying to answer this quickly. And uh, for any other Catholic out there. Um, you need to get out of that system. Okay? So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for the letter. All right? See you in upcoming videos.